Hello everybody, welcome back to a new reading vlog. Long time no reading vlog, but I'm happy to finally be doing my very first reading vlog of 2023. I had a plan to read four books for this vlog, but I'm still reading one from last week, so I will be continuing this. And I've woken up relatively early, snoozed my alarm a little bit to get in some reading done to finish as many books as possible. Currently, I'm reading, it is a sequel, but it's kind of like standalone-ish. It's A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore as part of the League of Extraordinary Women series. I got this I think as an add-on from Book of the Month a few years ago. I decided during my week off of vlogging that I would catch up on sequels so I had been reading Tokyo Dreaming and now this. I'm maybe halfway through so hopefully it doesn't take me too too long especially because I want to get some reading done before lunch. It is a romance. I should talk about it. It is a romance between Lady Lucy and um, I think he's supposed to be a duke, but Lord Tristan Ballantine. It's sort of a hate to love relationship. He teased her, played pranks on her as a kid. She hated that and now as they're older, Tristan is a war vet and very attractive. Women love him. He's kind of a playboy. Might be bi and she's trying very hard to resist him. The next romance that I have is highly anticipated. It's by Talia Hibbert, highly suspicious and unfairly cute. I was surprised to find that it is YA or categorized as such from the library. I don't really know anything about it, except that maybe it has to do with camping, but I saw Talia Hibbert has a new book coming out and I had to have it. Perfect romance for Valentine's Day, even though I don't really care about celebrating it. And then the other three were like pretty new-ish, thrillers that I wanted to get to as well. It's sort of a book of the month catch up for me, but I'll talk about those if I'm able to get to them as well. And right now, let's just start with the day. March I purchased finally came in. Hello, hello. We're not gonna mind that I'm in the same outfit, same pajamas, but I just took the time to finish the last 60 pages or so of A Rug of One's Own, which I'm very glad about because this book was really long <laughs> and I was getting quite bored. I really wasn't seeing like the and it's over 400 pages i wasn't really seeing a clear image of what tristan or lucy looked like and so tristan to me wasn't coming off very good looking even though he's this rogue he's a rake there was this one moment that kind of redeemed it so it's 3.5 as opposed to like three stars it could have been like two and a half blah i almost was going to decide to get the third book through book of the month as well but i might just like give these up and borrow them from the library. I might also have to revisit Bringing Down the Duke to see like why I really enjoy that one so much and I give it four stars because it, I had read it a while ago. It has been a while since I read the first book that I wasn't really remembering any of the characters that were coming up in this one as well. I don't really know who the third book's going to be about but unfortunately I didn't enjoy this one too too much and it's 3.5 but this means that I get to start on my new romance Talia Hibberts. So I'm going to be reading Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute next. It turns out it might be like rivals to lovers type of situation feels weird saying lovers for a YA book but bradley is perfect he is the star football player and he's top of top of all his classes but so is celine and they used to be best friends until bradley decided he was too cool for her and i guess that's when he joined like the football team and he abandoned her for the popular kids table and so when celine signs up for a two-part survival course in the woods bradley joins her her. And they're forced to work together as a team to win the grand prize that brings them closer together, I guess. Oh, crispy. Happy Valentine's Day also. I finally got dressed. I am wearing a hint of pink with black everything else just to show that i'm like acknowledging the holiday but my earrings are from hannah louisa and they're my dagger or something from hannah lee just to show a little spunk and hatred but i actually really like this outfit it's been a little bit warm so hopefully i won't get too hot at work with this yesterday was valentine's day so koda got me 
this really gorgeous bouquet. And today's plans are to go to my cousin's house to get some dinner. He's gonna cook us some barbecue. I'm gonna have to head over to H Mart to get some kimbap as a little appetizer. I'm there to meet his cats because he wants me to cat sit all three of them when he goes to Japan for a month with his wife and kids. But so far, I have really been enjoying Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. I didn't get to read too, too much. I read maybe 70-ish pages of this, but it's fairly easy to get through and you can already see why there's a rivalry. We know why the two of them aren't friends anymore and how things are kind of complicated now between them, especially with her, with Brad wanting to join this like scholarship program excursion type of situation and why this is going to be a competition. So far, it's really great. It's very enjoyable. I love Talia Hibbert's writing and her humor. I was just eating a macaron that my boss's wife gave me. Yesterday was so much fun. So I hung out with my cousin and his family. He has two little kids. One is like a literal baby. I don't think she's even six months yet. My boss's what kid is around the same age and they also know each other. So we were all hanging out together. My arms are a little sore from all of the child picking up, but in a good way. I wanted to say I need to finish this today that's the plan i should have like 100 or so pages left because i did a little bit of reading just now as well before lunch i haven't done any more reading but package just came for me and it's very exciting because with the new laptop i'm feeling a lot more motivated to film to edit really because i don't have any of my old files i had to look for all new music sound effects and whatnot and i just feel really good and so i'm using this high to have ordered a new camera a secondary camera Okay, pretty sure this is the charger. I can't use it right away, I think, because I bought a new SD card, like a mini. It requires a mini SD card. Here she is. It is in such good condition. Wow, this is gonna be so cool. I'm gonna have so much fun and I can just take this out with me amazing oh my god i'm so excited Good afternoon. I'm drinking the Nguyen Coffee Supply cold brew with condensed milk that my friend got for me. I've been wanting to try their coffee for a long time, but I don't drink a lot of coffee at home. But now they are being sold in Whole Foods apparently. So shout out Samantha. This is good. I would get that again. As you can tell, I've like tried to brighten this up a little bit, but it's a very, very gloomy day. It's very gray out. It was raining yesterday as well. That makes me not want to leave the house at all or get dressed and ready and take on the day. I also didn't sleep very well yesterday. I've just been sleeping so badly on Thursday nights for some reason. I find it a lot easier, A, to sleep next to Coda, which is like apparently a whole scientific thing and very inconvenient. On Wednesdays, I'm like usually fine. I'm looking not great the hair is flat but i wanted to talk about highly suspicious and unfairly cute because i think with this i've reached 519 pages or so i was able to finally finish this book yesterday i wanted to read a lot more but i fell down this urge to want to caption a lot of my videos yesterday i find the sound of typing is soothing this isn't like my favorite keyboard but I had fun doing that. But I'm giving this book four stars because it's really cute. I feel like YA has to work a lot, lot harder to be five stars. Although this comes kind of close. Again, Tully Hibbert's rating is 
wonderful. This was also her YA debut, I believe, and I think she did a splendid job. I really love this color. I love the characters individually and the fact that they also made a lot of sense together. Them exploring being friends again while also trying to think about whether or not they wanted to be in a relationship and it just reminded me a lot of like how young relationships can be or like high school relationships can be because you're kind of nervous, you don't really know what the other person is thinking and you're in high school, you go to the same school, like you don't want to feel embarrassed or humiliated around all these people that you know in a misunderstanding in the relationship so i thought this was great and i'm giving it four stars these are the next thrillers that i would like to read a part of me wants to pick what lies in the wood first because that is like my actual january book of the month what's my february book of the month Oh yeah, it's a romance. This is actually another book of the month book, but it's romance. So I think I'm gonna go with this one uh, with it being a super highly anticipated release for me as well. I got it because it's Jojo Moyes. I don't know anything about it except for this like brief explanation by the author, but I have read almost everything by her. I really love her book. She wrote like Me Before You. It's a little chunky also, which worries me. Like I really would like to finish this by Sunday so that I could start fresh fresh with a thriller video and like read a lot more than I have been, or at least during this week. This is called Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. From what I, oh, my book of the month bookmark says, be mine, meet every book because it's February. From what I can understand, this book is about two women who go to the gym, who go to the same gym, and one day they accidentally take each other's bags. They have very similar looking bags or whatever. However, their lives are as different as can be. They quite literally have to be in someone else's shoes or something to track each other down. Maybe this isn't a romance at all. Nisha is very glamorous and wealthy, but her husband wants to get a divorce, but she really wants to kind of hang on to the type of lifestyle that she's living. And Sam is like at rock bottom and she accidentally takes Nisha's bag. She's struggling to keep herself, her out of work husband, and her sarcastic teenager afloat. When she tries Nisha's six inch high Christian Louboutin red crocodile shoes for a series of important meetings, the unexpected results give her a jolt of confidence that makes her realize something must change and that thing is herself. When the two women finally meet, they will discover that each, each needs the other to put the right the wrongs that have been done to them and the women around them. I kind of like that idea of like trying on somebody else's shoes to see how they live to kind of give you a boost in life and give you a new perspective and how you may be able to live yours for the better. I thought this was a romance. Please don't mind the hair. Also, is this Zoom? Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, it's so late in the day. Coda and I have to run some errands today. Before I get ready though, I wanted to get in a little bit of reading. I've read maybe like 10 pages now, a little over like a chapter, but I've read 75 pages yesterday of Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes. And so far, Nisha is very, very unlikable. She's an American woman, very rich and entitled. She's essentially a trophy wife. She's the second wife of this wealthy, wealthy man. He is trying to divorce her. She will not be able to get any of his assets. So he's taking like the rich man cowards like divorce way out by like totally shutting her out of all of the hotels. And he is liquidating his assets or whatever and basically putting everything away into like the Cayman Islands so that she can't really access them anymore. They only have a joint account because she has no money of her own. She doesn't work. I feel for her. The situation is very frustrating because she needs money for a divorce lawyer and she has no money. She can't really do anything to help herself and she doesn't really have any friends because everyone she knows is essentially someone that she met within her husband's circle but she's still very rude and like so annoying kind of in like the way that only americans can be sam is also she has been out in Nisha's Louboutin shoes. She is striking all these amazing deals at work, but her home life still isn't that great. So far, the parallel is very stark and it's good so far. Please mind, Coda. We're gonna watch the NBA All-Star game. No, no. But I bought a SD card at Best Buy, even though I'm getting another one delivered on Wednesday, because I thought, why not have um, a backup, but also an adapter? Yay! I 
kind of wish that I brought this. I had the SD card before we went to eat pho, but hello. Oh, bruh. Oh, I like that. I have very little of someone else's shoes left. I could have finished the rest of it yesterday when I like couldn't go back to sleep, but I didn't feel like turning back on my light. But so far for the vlog, I have read 901 pages. I read like 270 yesterday, which I felt really good about. This book is so easy to read and I haven't really been able to talk about it. Nisha has very humbling moments in this book, which she definitely needs. She kind of had a hard upbringing, but once she married a wealthy man, she was living this sheltered life where she had someone to do everything for her she like had to get a job and she had to learn how to fend for herself and really provide for herself and herself only there is a moment where they collide obviously because they have each other's shoes and nisha really wants her stuff back now that we're like finishing up this book because i have 10 percent of it left to go through these women have spent time with each other i don't want to give it away but obviously they're like figuring it out each other's situations i'm I'm seeing where Sam is going to go from here. I feel like I know what Nisha's plan is going to be because it's kind of more linear for her in terms of wanting to get out of the country, get her son. For Sam, there's a few directions and a few things that are changing for her, so I'm interested in seeing how that's going to go for her and I really do still like Sam more, although Nisha has like this whole character journey. I realize I should stop filming when there's laundry going, but I did just finish Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes, and I'm giving it 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed reading these two storylines, waiting for them to collide and see how these two women will interact and what they will learn from them having each other's bags taken. I think it was a really nice lesson. I think it overall was just a really good feel-good story and such an easy read. In total for this vlog, I read two and a half books. I read A Rogue of One's Own, which I gave three and a half stars highly suspicious and unfairly cute by talia hibbert which was four stars and someone else's shoes by jojo moyes which was four and a half stars with 956 pages i feel like it's not the most that i usually read but it's a great way for me to ease into my first reading vlog of 2023 i hope you all enjoyed i hope you're having a lot of great reads of the year so far and i'll see you in my next video bye